All right, folks, the day has finally arrived. Canon and Nikon and Sony all have full frame mirrorless camera systems on the market now. So we should probably discuss the mirrorless versus DSLR debate once and for all as outdoor photographers. Hello everyone, I am Matthew Seville for NatureTTL.com and in this video, we're going to break it down into terms of what do you shoot and how do you shoot it? Whether you're a landscape photographer or a wildlife photographer, you might have a different approach to your photography and that might affect whether or not you actually decide that a DSLR or a mirrorless camera is best for you. So let's dive into it. <music> This video is supported by photo insurance specialists PhotoGuard. When disaster strikes and you damage your camera, the price to repair or replace can be high. PhotoGuard take the worry out of repairing or replacing your prized camera, drone, or video equipment. Check the link on screen or in the description below to get an instant quote from PhotoGuard. There's also a 10% discount for all subscribers to the Nature TTL channel. And now back to the video. As nature photographers, when it comes to mirrorless cameras versus DSLR cameras, you have to look past all of the bells and whistles and think about what these features could actually do for you and what cameras they're actually available on. For example, a lot of landscape photographers and definitely any serious nightscape photographer is going to be shooting from a tripod. So two of the things that mirrorless cameras offer may not really be that useful at all. One of them is, of course, in-body stabilization. The new Canon EOS R does not have it, but the Nikon Z6 and Z7 do have it, and so do most all of the latest Sony camera bodies. Having in-body stabilization, bottom line, is only useful if you're shooting handheld and at certain shutter speeds where stabilization could actually help. This might be for general travel, run and gun, on the trail type photographers who are not using a tripod but still shooting night, uh, travel, landscape type stuff, or wildlife, or just nature photography in general. If you're shooting handheld, in body stabilization could be useful. And if you're shooting on a tripod, it's just a bell and it's just a bell or a whistle, and you don't need it. Also, if you're shooting on a tripod, then you're probably looking at your camera from arm's length. You're not holding your camera up to your eye all the time. So the mirrorless electronic viewfinder is also not really that useful because you're already using the live view on the back of your DSLR and it pretty much works great for most cameras. Nikon's latest iterations of live view have been working well. Canon's got great, has had great live view for a very long time now. And the optical viewfinder, if you only ever hold the camera up to your eye every now and then, then the optical viewfinder is fine. In fact, I actually prefer it because when I'm on the trail and I'm traveling or something, the optical viewfinder, just raising the camera to my eye every now and then for a quick snap, means that I'm not killing my battery very much at all. And that's a great advantage of a DSLR. Another advantage that mirrorless cameras claimed to have was being lightweight and compact. And that hasn't really proven to be true across the board as Sony and Canon and Nikon cameras have come out. They're about the same weight as a Canon 6D or a Nikon D750. Especially if you consider that you might need to carry an extra battery around with you to get that mirrorless camera body to last as long as a DSLR. There are lightweight and affordable and small compact, yet still decently sharp mirrorless lenses. But for the most part, if you want an ultra sharp lens or an exotic focal length, then you're going to have to have a heavy lens, mirrorless or DSLR. So that's one thing to consider. If you like super fast glass, then weight savings may not really happen for you by switching to a mirrorless system. Or if you value very, very, very sharp extreme corners, but you're okay with a modest aperture lens, then again, 
You might save a tiny bit of weight by going to a mirrorless camera system, but not much, unfortunately. There is basically no free lunch. Honestly, if you want to save weight when you're traveling, you're going lightweight, you're on the trail or whatnot, if you want to save weight, the best way to do it is not necessarily to get a mirrorless system, but to get a cropped or smaller format sensor mirrorless system, or even a sensor, a smaller sensor DSLR, a Canon Rebel or a Nikon D5600. Those cameras are much, much smaller, much more compact, and they still have very, very sharp lenses available for those systems. The Canon EOS M system, the M5 has great, great image quality for travel, landscape photography at ISO 100. It's also pretty good at ISO 3200 for nightscapes if you're traveling very, very light. The Sony's A6300, 6500 cameras are great for travel. Again, if you're going to save weight, if you really want to save a ton of weight, the gigantic full frame camera is not going to do it for you, even if you go mirrorless. You might want to go with a crop sensor mirrorless like Micro Four Thirds or Fuji or Canon's EFM. Nikon doesn't have a DX mirrorless system yet, but maybe they will someday soon. And we'll see how that goes. Keep in mind, by the way, that some features really aren't just mirrorless only features. They just happen to be in certain cameras and not in other cameras. Articulated LCD screens, for example, used to be something that were only really showed up on some mirrorless cameras or most mirrorless cameras. But lately, almost all Nikon DSLRs have articulated LCDs. And the Canon 6D Mark II has a fully articulated LCD that's really nice for shooting low angle photography or also high angle photography. And if you want a articulated LCD, then you don't necessarily have to get a mirrorless camera. You just need to get the right DSLR. Okay, let's say you're a wildlife photographer. You need great frames per second, you need great reliable autofocus, and you need access to big gigantic telephoto lenses sometimes that, that again, have great reliable autofocus. For example, Sony's A9 camera has a great impressive frame rate and pretty impressive autofocus, but the lens selection on the native Sony mount is pretty limited still. And adapting a giant Canon telephoto lens is not going to get you the best autofocus performance because it's a non-native cross-compatibility situation. All right, what have we learned today, everybody? That you should choose the right camera for your style of shooting, your subject matter, based on not just the mirrorless versus DSLR debate or whatever seems to be the hot popular camera, but the actual features and image quality that you need, the lens selection, those are the things that truly matter. Of course, let's be honest with ourselves, part of the fun of photography is buying new camera gear. It's just exciting. So let's say that you're the type of photographer who might be totally happy with getting a mirrorless camera. Which one should you get? Let's answer this question really quick, and then we'll get out and go take pictures, okay? First, if you want the most resolution possible, Sony's A7R Mark III and Nikon's Z7 both have over 40 megapixels and amazing image quality all around. So if you're a landscape photographer, or if you're any type of nature photographer that makes big prints, you're going to want one of these amazing beasts of a camera. Or if you're already a Canon shooter, there's probably going to be a 5DSR style camera coming out soon for the new RF mirrorless mount. And that camera could have 50, 60 megapixels for sure. Next, let's also consider the more modest resolution cameras. Sony's A7 Mark III and Nikon's Z6 both have 24 megapixels, which is a nice, good, solid number for general photography, travel photography, time-lapse photography, nightscape photography. It's a great all-around do-everything type of camera. Both of these cameras are just under $2,000, and both of them have in-body stabilization, which is great for trail running and hand-holding all of your shots. But keep in mind that the Sony is the only one with dual card slots right now. The Nikon Z6 and Z7, and also the Canon EOS R, don't have dual card slots. 
The Canon EOS R is $2300, but it's missing things like dual card slots and in-body stabilization. With that said, if you're familiar with Canon's menus and ergonomics, if you already have a bunch of Canon L lenses, you definitely might want to give Canon a chance to develop a few more bodies for this RF mount before making any big decisions. For example, if autofocus is very important to you, then you want to stick with native lenses, whether that's Canon RF or EF lenses adapted to the EOS R body, or native Sony lenses on a native Sony body, or native Nikon lenses on a Nikon Z body. Either way, if autofocus is important to you, that's one thing to keep in mind. Stick with native system options. All right, that's about it, everybody. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe for more videos and leave a comment below if you've got something to say on this topic. I know it's a very strongly debated subject and I would love to hear your opinion. Until next time, take care. So we nature photographers need to discuss bugs in our ears. That's what we need to discuss. That natively work very, very well.